Okay, let's begin the demonstration of challenge activity 1.2.1, simulation-based approach for analyzing paired data. You're going to be given a demonstration, asked uh, what's going to be the best option to finish the statement. It says an eighth grade student in Canada was concerned that air dryers in public restrooms were too loud, especially with measured at the height of children's ears. Students' results were eventually published in Pediatrics and Child Health, uh, thinking that having hands underneath the dryer might make a difference in the sound intensity. The students took measurements with and without uh, hands under the dryer. Sound intensity uh, measured in weighted decibels from 22 makes difference in models of air dryers recorded at the student's height. So uh, which one is going to be the best relative to paired data is going to be whether it used an air dryer uh, with or without the hands underneath the given air dryer. Uh, can't use the same air dryer. It's got to be two distinct groups that have the no uh, overlap at a particular point in time. So the best one to fit that is going to be whether measurements were taken using the same air dryer with and without hands under the dryer. So we'll check it. We got a correct answer on the first one. Continuing to problem two. Okay, for question number two, uh, this is something very similar that we did in the STAT 1 class. Now we're looking at it from paired data. How do we set up the null hypothesis? How do we set up the alternative hypothesis uh, in terms of the analysis uh, that's going on there? And eventually we'll get to later on in the demonstrations, how we determine whether we reject or fail to reject a given null hypothesis based on the given criteria. So uh, based upon this was the same reading as problem number one, we need to identify the corresponding explanatory variable, the response variable, and set up what the null and the alternative hypothesis looks like. So the explanatory variable on this particular one was the same answer we came up with on that very last problem whether or not hands are underneath the dryer. Those are at a point in time, whether uh, in two separate groups that do not have any overlap, they're mutually exclusive of each other. So whether or not the hands are underneath the dryer is the explanatory variable. And there's no numerics that are assigned there. So uh, you can't put one for hands under the dryer and two not hands underneath the dryer. So this is categorical in nature. Quantitative would have been we assigned one or two, but for relative purposes in this case, that does not make any sense. Now, the response is quantitative in uh, nature because what are we trying to measure? Whether the hands were, were or not underneath the dryer, that response is going to be based upon sound intensity. We want to know whether the hands were underneath the dryer, get a measure for sound intensity, whether they were not underneath the dryer, get the corresponding sound intensity. That is quantitative in nature, so it is a quantitative variable. In that case, from the response perspective, what does the null look like? The difference between whether the hands were underneath the dryer and what, uh, whether they were not underneath the dryer, the difference between those two is mathematically represented by this U sub D. That's going to be the difference in those quantitative measures that are going to be between those. So the underlying assumption, our null hypothesis, is that they're equal to each other. There is no significant difference between having a hand underneath the dryer and not having the hand underneath the dryer. The opposite of equals is going to be a not equals. The value is zero. So that is typically for pair designs, how we set up a null versus the alternative hypothesis, equals versus not equals a relationship showing that U sub D representing the difference between the two pair design values equal to zero versus not equal to zero. Check our answer. We've got everything set up nicely there for problem number two. Going to three. And for problem number three here, we have uh, got a simulation here where we were given the corresponding statistics back, the P value, We'll analyze whether we reject or fail to reject uh, the null hypothesis relative to the p-value for this demonstration. So the first piece here, uh, let me get my pen going. Annotate. All right, so I got my pen going here. The first piece of this is how where does x sub d uh, reside? Well, the x sub d is the mean difference, the mean of the differences 
in this particular case, that is going to be obtained right there from the uh, from the information or the output of the simulation that occurred. So let me go back here. That value is 0 0.287. And what is X sub D? That is the mean of uh, the deference or the mean deference in that particular case. So we're selecting that one. In breaking reaction time in the given sample, this is based off the sample of the given data that was simulated out of this. So we're going to pick a uh, sample. Where does the p-value reside? Well, the p-value, if I select this, there we go. P-value is obtained right there. How was that calculated? It's doing it behind the scenes. The technology is coming up with the corresponding p-value. You do not have to go into Excel for this particular exercise and calculate it. It has already been done for you. So I come back over here, that P value is keyed in as 0 0.002. And then uh, if you recall back from either a previous statistics course or if you've taken Math 217, there was a couple things relative to this problem that was assumed from the Stat 1 course. Uh, anything that is a P value less than 0 0.05 has a very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Even at any level of significance, typically at a 5% or even at a 1%, this p-value is, for all intent and purposes, really close to zero. So this provides very strong evidence. And again, this was covered some uh, in the Math 217 class, where the basis of anything less than point, uh, zero 0.05 was considered a strong, and even in this instance where it's really close to zero, very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. And what are we taking a look at here again is based upon the mean difference in breaking times is the same comparing Facebook to Instagram. So we check it and utilizing the output of that simulation, we've got our correct answers listed there. Completing this challenge activity. Thanks.